What I want to do in this video is think a little bit more about how populations can be regulated. And broadly speaking, we can think of the regulation of populations in two different categories. There's the regulation dependent on density, so density density dependent regulation, density dependent. And then there's a type of regulation that isn't dependent on density, so we could call that density independent regulation. Independent, independent regulation. So first, let's think about density-dependent regulation. And let me draw a little chart here for to help us visualize that. So let's say that that axis is the population. I'll say P for population, and let's say this axis is time. So T for time. In previous videos, we talked about. A population, and I like to use the example of rabbits, how it could grow exponentially. So if it's just growing a certain percent every month, that population will grow exponentially. But we can't expect that that will just happen forever. If rabbits just kept growing on, growing exponentially, it wouldn't take long for them to cover the surface of the earth and then fill the universe. If in some way they weren't limited by anything, but we know that they are limited by things, and so the environment. Only has a certain amount of carrying capacity, and we'll think a little bit about this carrying capacity in a second, and what's determining the carrying capacity. And so, as the density of the rabbits in a certain area get higher and higher and higher, well, then the density dependent. Let me use a different color. Color the density dependent factors start to play. The density dependent limiting factors. And what could be some of these density-dependent limiting factors that keep the population from going dramatically above the carrying capacity? Well, the most obvious one could be competition for resources. Competition, competition for resources, and the one that might come to mind most clearly is food resources. So this is actually a picture of Australia in the mid 1800s, and they had a bunny population problem. Uh, that the rabbits were first introduced in order to have a little bit of hunting, but then they they reproduced like rabbits. And it was estimated that at some point you had over a billion rabbits that had populated the country, and that was you might say, oh how how cute. But it was a huge problem. They were uh, they were eating all of the the great. Uh, uh, they were eating they were eating the the farmable. Uh, they were eating crops. They were they were eating the grass that you that other types of livestock would graze on. So it was a huge infestation of rabbits. And so you can imagine one competition for resources is just the grass itself. In this picture, you can see that it's this the land is barren. Maybe this happened because the rabbits ate all of the vegetation here. So competition for resources. One type of resource could be food. Another type of resource could be could be water. There might only be so much water to support、uh, organisms of a certain kind. And we're only you know here we often talk about animals, but it could be plants or it could be、uh, bacteria. It could be all sorts of organisms that we're talking about. And if we're talking about plants, we could think about light. You could say, well, what limits? Uh, having an infinite number of plants in a certain area, well, water will limit,、uh, the nutrients in the soil will limit, but also access to light. You've seen pictures of a dense canopy in a rainforest, and the plants are are trying to seek out whatever gap in the canopy they can find so that they can get some access to that to that、uh, to that light. Now, there's other examples, and this wouldn't apply as much to say plants, but the idea of shelter. This might apply to humans or To other types of animals that maybe need shelter in order to hide, or a place to reproduce, or whatever else. So at some point, if the population density gets too high in a certain region, then these things are going to limit how how dense the population can get, or frankly, just what the population actually is. And so that would lead, once again, we were, we talked about this in a previous video, to this logistic curve right over here, where we just we don't we just start approaching the carrying capacity. And it is possible that you could even go above the carrying capacity, and then you're kind of this very unstable situation. And then something happens; you go below it, then you go above it, and then below it, and then something like that. But what are other density-dependent de factors that we could think about? Well, another thing is if if you are a predator, when、uh, say the rabbits become this dense, it's much easier to to start to pick them off, and it's much easier to get your lunch. And so 
predatory factors, or we could say predation. Predation. Once a population gets large enough and dense enough, it might be the, predator, the predators who can say, hey, we can start. It's way easier for us to, to get our lunch. Now, the other thing that it might be a little less obvious, but when you have a high density population, and there's examples of this in medieval times in Europe and, and even in modern times today with, with human populations, but this happens with all organisms, is that when you become a, a dense population, there's more interaction, there's more contact, there's more sharing of resources like water. And so disease and parasites becomes an issue. So let me write this down. Disease, disease and parasites can spread much easier and they could they're much more likely to start limiting the population the thing that always comes to my mind is the plague in medieval times where uh, it was very easy to spread from one human to the next or frankly from rats to humans and and whatever else now the other thing and this is maybe somewhat related to everything else we've talked about is waste accumulation so let me write this right over here waste if you have a really high density of population and, and the waste is just everywhere, it could poison the water, it might uh, poison uh, sources of food, it, it, it might help the spread of disease and parasites. And once again, all of these things help define what the carrying capacity, how dense can a population get in a, in a certain region. Now you might say, well, maybe they don't have to stay in a region, maybe they can uh, go and explore other places, and that's possible, and that's been the story for many different types of species. Lemmings are, fav are famous for when their population gets dense in a certain area, groups of them start just running to start exploring other areas, sometimes running in directions that uh, are not that good for them. So all of these are density dependent factors. And a lot of these, as, as, we, as we just talked about, you could think of them as biotic factors. They're related to other living things around. The density independent factors tend to be abiotic. They tend to not be related to living things. So the most common density independent factor is natural disasters. So natural, natural disaster. We have a picture here of a forest fire. The deer population here might not be in any way close to their carrying capacity, but despite that, the forest fire maybe might kill off a lot of the deer. Uh, other natural disasters, you could have a flood, you could have a tsunami, you could have a, uh, a meteorite coming from, from outer space uh, that happened to the dinosaurs uh, to just knock out huge populations. And so density independent factors, you could have the population growing and it's and at just some random point, it just there's some density independent factor. There's a forest fire, or there's a flood, or something else. And then maybe the population grows from there and eventually gets closer to its carrying capacity. Who knows? But the density independent factors, once again, it's not related to where we are on this curve. It could happen at any time. And to some degree, they feel a little bit more random. Now with all of this talk about carrying capacities and, and, and the different you know, density dependent factors, you might be thinking, well, what about human beings? Uh, we, we are for sure a species and we, we and, and so the same ideas apply to us. And so is there a natural carrying capacity for the environments that we are in? And there is a famous philosopher scientist, Thomas Malthus, and I have a whole video on him, but he hypothesized that Humanity had a very serious problem because we were our populations were growing exponentially. So this is population, this is time. And so he said, look, there's just a natural carrying capacity for human beings. And as human beings just kept growing exponentially, we would hit, we would hit that that carrying capacity. And the term for that carrying capacity in the case of human beings that, that Thomas Malthus set up, and there's a whole video on this, is the Malthusian limit. And he hypothesized that once we got, once we crossed it or approached it, there would be all sorts of crises. That once you're at this carrying capacity, there might not be enough food, and then there might be a famine. Or the, we, we go across it and then disease spreads a lot more. And so he was just applying these ideas of density dependent factors to human populations and said, hey, this is not going to be pleasant for humanity. Now what's been interesting is that humanity has found ways repeatedly of pushing up the carrying capacity for us as a species. We've been able to do it, frankly, through technology, frankly, finding uh, ways to grow food in denser and denser ways, ways to stave off disease, ways to 
uh, have uh, to get rid of waste and, and sewage and all of that. So it's an interesting philosophical question to say, is there ever going to be a point where human being just hits this Malthusian, where, where human society hits this Malthusian limit? Or are we always going to be able to fend it off by just better and better technology? Or maybe even just regulation of the population itself so that we don't, you know, where we just have whatever birth control or, or family planning or whatever it might be so that we are less likely to hit some eventual limit.